From next year, electric vehicles shipped between the UK and the EU were expected to have 45% of their parts sourced in the EU or UK or face the tariff. But Germany's auto industry is now warning that if this comes into effect on January 1st, the whole of Europe would be put at a significant competitive disadvantage against their Chinese rivals. So the plot thickens there, does it not? Is Europe beginning to realise that it should have perhaps been a little more lenient to old blighty during those Brexit negotiations. Well, joining me now is the motoring journalist and fan of these EV cars, Quinton Wilson. Quinton, thank you as ever for your time. I mean, is this a sign that actually Europe are saying, especially Germany, hold off French protectionists? This would actually not serve us well at all. Um, the, the, the EU, uh, European Commission, haven't done a good job with, with these rules of origin. And it's a bit complicated, but let me try and talk you through them. As you said, you've got to have now 45% up to 50% of your car created locally. Now, that's okay for combustion cars because manufacturers have got all those supply chains sorted out from, from years ago. But when it comes to electric cars, you know, you've got to have 45% of your battery pack made here in the UK or in Europe. Now, the problem is we had the pandemic, so all the factories closed. We had the semiconductor crisis. We had uh, uh, the Ukraine war. The supplies of battery materials to factories were disrupted. So, so car makers had to go anywhere but locally to get. So that supply chain is the big problem for car makers, both in, in Europe and in the UK, because we haven't got the battery factories. And these bureaucrats in, 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 in Europe are saying, right, well, OK, uh, we didn't quite realise that it would take three years to get a battery factory going and supplying batteries to a car maker. So we'll give you, well, we'll give you another three years. So they've, they've, they've stopped it and said, OK, in 2027, you'll have to, to have these tariffs. Um, or, 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 you know, get, get the content uh, up to 50%. But the problem is, you know, as I said, three years to make a battery factory. It costs billions. Yeah. And to get the car batteries actually made and into production vehicles maybe takes another 10 to, to, to 20 months. So I can see us coming back in 2027 and saying, European Union, we need another extension because you got this wrong. Yes, I mean, a lot of voices have been saying, of course, that the trade and cooperation agreement signed by Boris Johnson would spell disaster for the UK's uh, auto manufacturing industry. And actually, if you look, Quinton, as you well know, Nissan have just made, what was it, a billion quid commitment to their plant in Sunderland. That's not bad going, is it? Two billion. And they have batteries which they make here in the UK. Uh, which puts them in a really, really great position. But look, all this is about attracting investment into the UK. And whether you like electric cars or not, you're ideologically opposed to them, that's fine. But the fact is the rest of the world is investing. America, 390 billion investment. Europe, 25 billion in battery factories. We'll either be little Britain standing on the sidelines wondering what happened to our auto industry, or we're going to try and make an effort to really produce some fine electric cars and get that investment in. Are you seeing, Quinton, the, the demand for electric cars? Because, of course, the government have set itself targets, well, set itself, set the industry targets for manufacturing and getting these goods to the market. Are you actually seeing the demand from consumers, who are, of course, the ones that will pick up these cars, are you seeing that starting to move in that direction? Or do you think, actually, these targets that the government has set for 2030 and so on and so forth, that of course Rishi Sunak delayed. Are you of the view that actually such a delay was necessary because there simply isn't the demand for these cars yet? Well, it's a vicious circle in the sense that Sunak threw a hand grenade into the electric car market by changing the date from 2030 to 2035, which has stopped demand. We've also got a, a big recession in the sense that, you know, you can get discounts on, on virtually every, every single car electric or combustion. But Sunak hasn't helped. The car makers were really angry with him because they said, look, we've been going for this date of 2030. We want consumers to buy our cars. 
uh, this is what we've been told, this is where we've been going, this is our, our strategy. And then the Prime Minister goes and does this amazing U-turn, which has helped nobody except his backbench Conservatives, who are the people who asked for it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, do you see this getting any better then? I mean, are we going to be once again a manufacturing powerhouse? Will we be able to actually shake off the threat of China having a monopoly when it comes to the manufacturing of these batteries that you speak of there that cost billions of quid to actually start manufacturing? China's got a 20 year advantage on us, Aaron. I mean, they've been doing it and sure yeah. for ages and ages and ages. We won't be able to compete with them, but we will be able, because we're great at research and development in this country, and everybody talks it down, but we've got some really great scientists, some great battery engineers, some great electrochemists. And, and the thing to do is to create new batteries, new electrochemistries that we can then sell to the Chinese. So look, don't give up. This is a really, really important piece of, of, of legislation that gets income and investment and, 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 and global green capital into the UK. And we've got to carry on going for it. And, and unhelpful policy shifts from the Prime Minister helps nobody, least of all the car industry in the UK. Yeah, I mean, what do you say, Quinton, to the, just very briefly, what do you say to those who are saying it's just too expensive, electricity is going to go up in January? Um, so look, we need to control the price of electricity. At the moment, it's hooked to gas. Um, which is nuts. The gas has gone up, so electricity is going up. Decouple electricity from gas. Take take a, a control over the price yeah. we pay for electricity. Get more renewables, more batteries. We can we can do this instead All of right. relying. We like an optimistic note to end on, Quinton, there. So thank you very much, Quinton Wilson, there, the motor and journalist. Now, folks, you're watching and listening.